Let's take a look at the manual method to get conversion information, which is actually found in a different area of the backend. You don't have to follow along here if you'd like to keep your place. Just kind of watch for a second. I'm going to open up stores here, the stores tab. And in a new tab in this in my browser, I'm going to open currency rates. Then what you would do here is select once again the import service you want to use and then simply click import and once you're done assuming you are using multiple currencies on your website you'll have a big table here with other currencies besides just the US dollar listed and when you manually import the exchange rate information from whichever service you use it'll show a list of everything and how it compares to one unit of whatever the default currency is for your website. And then you would want to, of course, save when you're done updating that information. Back to general configuration. Next, we have store email addresses. Now, go ahead and expand all of these. And that's going to give you a clear picture of what these are. This is really pretty simple stuff. Notice that in each of these sections, we have a sender name and a sender email. Same for all of these. This is the name and email address that other site visitors will see if they ever receive an email from your website. If they ever receive an email from your general contact on your website, it'll simply say by default, owner, and it'll say that it came from owner at example.com. Obviously, if you have a different email address that you would like to receive maybe replies from, you would want to change this. And again, just deselect use system value and you can put whatever you want in here. One thing that I would like to do, and this depends a lot on your store. It depends on how formal or casual you want to be or how much information you want to give out or whatever. I like to use something other than owner for sender because that sounds very sterile to me. You might even just use the store's name, Coffee Bean Central. If you're going for the more kind of casual feel, then you might even put your own name and it kind of puts a personal touch on the general contact email. Again, it depends on what kind of store you're running and how you want your emails to come across. I'll keep this email as the default because I'm not going to get into setting up emails here, but I'm going to change this to the name of the store for the general contact. If they receive an email and it's from the sales portion of the website, it's related to sales, then it'll simply, the name will be sales. The email address will be sales at yourwebsite.com. Oh, and do note that you'll want to put your own domain here. So in most cases, you will be changing the email to at least have your real domain. For sender name, Again, you can do sales or you might even just use your store's name here as well. For customer support, it might be nice just to say Coffee Bean Central Customer Support. That way it's 100% clear where this is coming from. If it just says customer support, that could be from anywhere. This at least tells your customers what company's customer support, what store's customer support this email is coming from. And then you have two custom options here that you might use in other parts of the website for other things, which we're not going to worry about right now, but just know that there are two custom options beyond general sales and customer support. You may use these for any number of reasons. And here is where we would configure the same information for those two types of emails. Contacts is similar to store email addresses, except it kind of goes the other way. This is for emails that you will be receiving or somebody from your store will be receiving as opposed to one of your customers. So contact us, for instance, this simply enables a contact us form. And then for email options, this is where you'll put in all of the information for who's going to receive that email, which of your store email addresses will be sending that. So you might want to say, if you have someone in mind, maybe Fred is your 
contact us guy and you want him to receive all your emails and Fred at your domain is going to receive all of the emails that come in through your site's contact form. And you can say that you want these emails to be sent from any one of these. This would probably be best kept at custom email too. And then we'll keep the email template the same. And then note, if we're using custom email to here for the sender, then we might wanna go back up to store email addresses and then change this to contact form. So whenever Fred receives an email from the contact, it's set up to be custom email too. The sender's name will be displayed as contact form. When Fred gets that email and he sees contact form, at the top, he'll know that this is an email that came in from the website via the contact form and there's somebody that he needs to view their message or get back with them in some way. And once again, at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and save our configuration once again so we don't lose anything that we've been working on. After we've configured store email addresses in our contact information, we can click on reports. This is a very simple part of our configuration. We have year to date starts. In most cases, you want to keep this as the first day of the first month. Notice month comes first here. The only time I can think that you may want to change this is if you want to set it to uh, the start of the fiscal year rather than the start of the calendar year. But of course you can change it to whatever you feel like changing it to. And then you can select the day of the month that the month starts on. I can't really think of a good situation where you would want to use anything other than one, but the option's there if we want to change it. Here we have content management, and this is basically where we just can turn on or off our WYSIWYG editor. If you don't know what a WYSIWYG editor is, it stands for what you see is what you get. This is basically a text editor that gives you some sort of interface similar to Microsoft Word, for instance, where you can type text and then at the top of the screen, you have a list of options to make things bold or italicized or a different size or a different font. If you turn this off, then basically you have a plain text. So most people are going to prefer to keep the WYSIWYG editor on unless you're a developer or you like working purely in HTML. We're going to keep this enabled for our tutorial. And then this use static URLs for media content. You can basically ignore this. We want to leave this alone because you almost never want a static URLs for reasons that I won't get into. We're just going to keep this as no. Then finally, under the general portion of our store configuration, we have New Relic reporting. New Relic is a third-party service that provides business data for your operations. Since this is a beginner's tutorial, we're not going to cover this, but just know that if you do ever sign up for a New Relic account, this is where you would enter your account information to integrate New Relic reporting with your website. Down here, enable cron just means whether New Relic reports can be run on schedule with cron on your website. And that's it for the general section of store configuration. So we have a lot of the basic stuff in place now, but as you can see, there will still be some more things to configure before we begin adding products to our store. When you're done with all this, make sure you save your configuration one last time. And finally, go to cache management and anything that it says has been invalidated. In our case, that's configuration and page cache. We're going to select those, make sure we have refresh selected up here and click submit. And now once again, we've essentially put those changes into effect and we're ready to move on with configuration.